simple chapter. Talks about panel boards. Um, we dealt with panel boards guys before. What I would like to do before we go ahead and start is identify a couple of things. And when we bring Color Hammer and Square D, they always talk about this one. So you're going to have um, three things you're going to be encountering when you deal with this. Oops, there you go. So three things we're going to encounter when we're dealing with uh, with panel board. Let me go back up a little bit. You're going to have the panel boards. You're going to have the switch, uh, switch board, and switch gear. When it comes to the commercial and industrial project, you are either dealing with a, a panel board, or you're dealing with a switch gear or switch board, and that's what we're going to be doing in a few seconds here. So why do we need a panel board? Panel boards, a few things identify different type, identify the types of panel boards. Um, um, Adam, my friend, when you hear in the industry, when you hear the people talk about panel boards, they're going to be either saying panel boards or switch gear or switch board. These are the major things that you're going to hear. So panel boards, if you guys remember when Color Hammer was here, panel boards, the only difference is the amps and how they build it. They really the only difference they have and how, how they build it. Take this. If you have a panel, if you if you did calculation for a panel and your panel is 1200 amp or less, you are looking at a panel board design. Panel board design, there's the only difference between panel board and switch gear. Switch gear, they're standalone. You can put them right in the middle of the, uh, the room. Panel boards, they have to be supported by a wall. Can I have a thumbs up chat? That's really the major difference. Panel boards, they have to be supported by a wall, either surface mounted, uh, attached to, or in the wall. Does that make sense? You can either put it in the wall, recessed, or surface mount the panel, or you can attach it to the wall, right? So that's your panel board. Switch gear and switch board, they are standalone. Imagine a switch gear, imagine six refrigerator, big size refrigerator, side by side, if you put them side by side in the middle of a room, imagine the size that they're going to take. That's a 4,000 amp switch gear. That's a switch gear or switchboard design. So it's big, they're standalone, they are, have a structure. And if you guys remember the uh, Color Hammer presentation, how they build them, they build really structure, steel structure, and then they put the mineral around it. Okay, so that's really the, ma the major part. So when we, now for our project, for our project, um, uh, Darren, my friend, you guys have all the panels up to 1200 amp. We're looking at what? Up to 1200 amp. Panel boards, higher than 1200 amp. You have two options. You have a switch gear. If it's higher than 1200 amp, you have a switch gear or you have a switch board. Now, what's the difference between a switch gear and a switch board? Major difference without getting into the, uh, to the manufacturers. A switch gear, guys, is rated to handle the short circuit longer than the switch board. They look alike. They look alike. You walk in when we go do our tours. When we go to Boston Scientific, you're going to walk around the switch board. It's switch gear and switch boards. Switch gears and switch boards look alike. The only difference is when they list them, you will list them under different labels. They list them under completely different labels. If it's a switch gear, it can, the only thing that you need to be aware of, if it's a switch gear, you're looking at 30% to 40% more money spending. They are draw out type switch gear. They draw out, you draw these circuit breakers. Uh, and that's what we're specifying for our project. Our project specified the main panel. It's going to be a switch gear. Switch board, my friends, is it cannot handle the short circuit uh, for a long time. Typically three cycles. 30 cycles is a switch gear. Three cycles uh, is a switch board. They look alike. We'll look, I'll show you examples in a second. Uh, select and adjust circuit breakers. Um, the panels, guys, the notorious, the why, why we have panels? We have panels to put circuit breakers on them. Why do we put circuit breakers in the panels? So two things. Number one, we can feed loads. And number two, we can control and protect loads, right? That's the reason why we have a panel. We have a panel full of circuit breakers or fuses. The main goal of that panel is to house these circuit breakers or fuses, right? And what, why do we need circuit breaker or fuses? To control the flow of energy to these loads, protect them, and distribute them. Three words. Distribute the power to a different brand circuits, <coughs> protect them, and control them. When I say control, if Darren decided he wants to shut down this section, go to the panel board, shut down the circuit breaker, that's control. Protect. If Darren is working on the light right above your head and he shorted line to ground, what's going to happen to the circuit breaker? Trips. That's protection, right? 
and distribute, you look at the panel right there, it's taking big chunk of uh, power, 100 amps, and distributing it to different loops. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, why we have panels? We distribute, protect, and control. All panels, panel boards or switch gears. Um, and then when we distribute, what do we bring to it? When we distribute, we have to bring to it, of course, a, a feeder. When we distribute, we have to bring to it my feeder, my feeder. <laughs> so that's what I want to uh, emphasize and show you guys a, a few things here. And um, if you guys remember, Cutler Hammer has a really great presentation. They go into details about the structure. But all what you have to remember um, is a really very simple thing for, uh, as far as we're concerned. Doesn't want to allow me to do it. Okay, as far as you're concerned, the only thing you need to remember is panels. You need a panel board. If your amps are 1200 amp or less, you're looking at a panel board. If your amps carry are higher than 1200 amp, what are you looking at? Two options, switch gear or switchboard. Okay, which one am I gonna choose, Chad? Switch gear or switchboard? It's your choice. Are you willing to spend an arm and a leg? Switch gear. Are you willing to spend not an arm and a leg, substantial amount of money that's needed? Switch, switchboard will be cheaper than switch gear. Does that make sense? But they do the same function. Switch gears and switchboards, guys, can go as high as 4,000 amps. So higher than 1,200 amps, so 1,600 amps and higher. From 1,200 amps to 4,000 amps, you're looking at switch gear or switchboard. Switch gear or switchboard. Um, Okay, so that's um, that's what, what we do. Panels, what do they do? We talked about this one, guys. Why do we have panels? They distribute the power, they protect and control. Three things, distribute, protect, control. Doesn't matter if it's a panel board or if it's a switch gear or a switch or a switchboard. Okay, here's a good example, guys, about the panel board. This, these are uh, 15 panel boards in the project. Remember that project that you guys are looking at? They have 15 panel boards. Each one of these 15 panel boards have um, a location, of course, located somewhere. You have the main circuit breaker or main lungs only, and you have the voltage, and you have how many circuit breakers, and the rating of the circuit breakers. You have the poles, how many poles, and the purpose. This is what we call it, uh, the purpose of these circuit breakers. So these are all, a list of all the panels that we have in this project. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand. In your project, you guys are going to have a list of all your panels. We're going to have receptacle panel, lighting panel, emergency panel, right? Mechanical panel one, mechanical panel two. You're going to have a list similar to this. So your riser that you guys are going to build next week for your friend Chad after um, on, on Tuesday starting, your riser is going to show all these panels connected together as well as with a switch gear. The way these panels are connected in the project is right in here, guys. I don't know if you can see it. They have a circuit, they have a transformer that feeds uh, P14 here. The uh, 11, 12, and 13 is fit from this transformer. We have here uh, uh, 7 and 8 is fit from here. So these are all the location of these panels, how they fit them. Any question, guys, about the panels? So, so when you have a panel, you have a name for the panel. Here's the name of the panel, P1. Location where the panel is located. It's located in the basement. North corridor, this one. Uh, the main circuit breaker is 100 amp. The voltage is 281, 3 phase, 4 wire. Anybody knows why 3 phase, 4 wire? Right? 3 phase, 4 wire, 3 phases, and a neutral, right? Um, number of circuit breakers, I have 19 to 6 of different sizes. If you can see, 20, 20, 20. Uh, single pole, 19 circuit breakers, single pole, 20 amp. They are used for lights, 2. Circuit breaker 20 amp, two pole, they're used for um, uh, receptacle. And we have six uh, or five receptacles, 20 amp single phase are spare. Reminder, guys, when you do the panels, is to allow spare on the panels, like we did in the commercial project. Any question as about the panels? So that's what you're looking basically when you look at a panel. That These are all the panels that we use for this uh, uh, project. I want to remind you guys, if you look at it, we at the bottom here, help me here, Jenny, one of these says main lugs only. Panels come in two types, either main lugs only or main circuit breakers. What's the difference? The difference, main circuit breaker has a circuit breaker, and main lugs only has only lugs, no circuit breaker. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand, and you're repeating yourself here like a grandma. Okay, so that's basically what um, what this is. This is very important, guys. This is the rating um, uh, 
uh, the rating shall not be um, less than the minimum feeder capacity as calculated by 408. You guys already did that for me. Remember how we did the load calculation? When you came up with the amp for the lighting camp, first you calculated all the amps. That's the calculation based on two, 220, exactly. And your amps were, say, 120. Then you went to the next standard panel, 125. That's what this is telling you. You guys have done that with me. Where does it say that? Why did Chad make you do that? Because of Article 480, it tells you when you slide the panel, the panel must be able to handle the loads fed from that panel. Here you done. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand how to size the panel and that I can't feed more loads from the panel than the panel can handle. So if your panel is 125 amp and your load is 200, can you feed a 200 amp load from 125 amp load? No. Why? Well, if you don't know, because the code says so. <laughs> because you, your code says so. Okay. The overcome friction device. That's another thing, guys. The trip function of the overcome friction device must be must be equal or less to the panel. For example, if I have a 300 amp panel, I can put a 300 amp fuse or circuit breaker in it or ahead of it, inside it or ahead of it, or I can put a 200 amp or I can put a 100 amp, right? But can I put 400? No. That's what this, the, the second bullet here tells you. When you put a circuit breaker inside the panel or ahead of the panel, the circuit breaker or the fuse cannot be more than what the panel is rated for. Done. You, it can't be more than what the panel is rated for. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that one. Okay, and I know we emphasize this many times, so some of these are review for you. Okay, so we have, um, now when it comes to panels, gentlemen, there are two types of, um, the, um, because the panels have a circuit breaker or fuse ahead of them, they are rated Unless it says it's rated 100% duty, more, almost all the circuit breakers are rated for 80%. So, for example, um, I wish we can write in that one here. We can't write that one. So, when it's, um, let me see if I can grab, um, uh, okay, let me see for a second here. If I grab my calculation. So, if the panel, is rated it says a uh, 200 amp panel you can't pull 100 amp out of it i'll show you in a second here because circuit breakers guys are rated for 80 percent unless they specifically say so unless they specifically uh, emphasize that they're 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 different so for example there you go so if i have a very simple very very easy example right here i have i'm just going to make it very easy simple i have a panel and the bus is the bus is inside the panel, and I have a circuit breaker right here for this panel. Okay, so let's just pick a panel, a panel size. I have a panel size of uh, 600 amp. I have a 600 amp. This is a 600 amp panel, panel board, right? Now, based on my load, based on my load, guys, I put a 600 amp circuit breaker. Can you guys see that the circuit breaker cannot be more than the panel is rated for? Everybody understand that? Now, continuously, continuously, how much current can I get out of this panel continuously? How much current can I get out of this panel continuously? What's the percentage? Percentage-wise? 80%. Thank you. So out of this panel, I can only take 80% continuously. So you take 80.8, multiply this one by 600. What is it, 480? How much, 480? Yeah. So continuously, I really can't get more than 480 out of this uh, this panel, right? Is that the point, 48 of that? Darling Thomas. Okay, so that's what this is thing you. Unless, unless it tells you guys that this circuit breaker is rated for 100% which they don't make them at this size, 100%, you are pulling 80%. So let me tell you why we don't care, carry about what, when, when you guys were sizing with me last week and you did your load calculation, I gave you A and B and C on it. Why we didn't worry about this one? Do you remember, Jeff, when you did the lighting? What did you guys do when you sized the lighting? The first thing we did, we took the lighting load and what did we do to it? Multiply by a factor, what was the factor? 1.25. Anybody ever wondered why we multiply it? Because it's continuous load. And then we size the panel. 
So all this to avoid having to cut it by 80%. So our panels are already oversized for the load that we need. Does that make sense, guys? To solve this problem of 80% of the panel, you take your load, which is continuous, multiply by 125, and then size your panel. Now your panel is weighted to handle your continuous load. Cool? If your load is non-continuous, I can pull a 600 amp non-continuous out of it. A continuous load, guys, by code is three hours or more. Three hours or more. So that's what I wanted to emphasize a little bit here. Um, okay. Get, get that one here. So that's what I wanted to, oops, we'll get into the code in a second here, show you. Um, so that's basically what the 80%. Uh, available standard panels, you guys are looking at the avail available standard panels and switch gear right here from DeWalt. It goes from 40 amp all the way to 600 amp as panel boards. And I, I told you it goes actually to 1200 amp as a panel board design. And then as a switch gear flips on this side, switch gear goes all the way to 4000 amp. 4000 amp switch gear. These are the size of the panels. When it comes to the size of the panel, guys, there are two sizes, the size of the copper or aluminum inside the panel, and also the size of the circuit breaker ahead of it. So when they say I have a 100, and, uh, 100 amp panel, it really, in reality, this panel, there is, I don't think they have, uh, they might not, three phase, three phase, looking at three phase, you don't have a 100 amp panel three phase. What they do is they have a 125 amp panel, but you know what they do, do it to you? They both just a circuit breaker 100 amp ahead of it. Everybody understand that the size of the panel could be slightly higher than the size of the, uh, of the circuit breaker. So you're looking at the size of the panels here or the circuit breaker that can be on them. Um, panels can be main lugs only and main circuit breakers. Everybody got that one? Main lugs only, main circuit breakers. So not a big deal. Uh, when it comes to panels, guys, there are two ways of feeding them. Either you feed every panel from one feeder, or this is how they did it in this project. Can you see what they did in this project? This is called subfeed. This is called subfeed. So what they do... Oh, gosh, I hit that. Not being able to draw on that one. Um, so what they did... Oops, come on down, down, Chad. What they did, they brought at, I think, a two, I just can't remember which panel. Let's just say 225 amp feeder and to a J box, and they tap the feeder to feed a 225 amp panel one, and another 225 amp panel two, and a third, huh? and a third 225 amp panel three. So we have three, we can have multiple panels fit from the same feeder. This is what I, what some people guys call it the poor man's uh, job, why? What happens if you have a short circuit right inside this panel? How many panels are you gonna lose? All the panels on this feeder could be lost. So what they did here, this is one design. The way we're going to design it is different. Our project is going to take this panel and feed it from a separate feeder and take the second panel, feed it completely from a different feeder. Why, um, why doing it this way? Why do people do it this way? Cheap, easy. This is more economical. Contractors tend to do a lot of things like this. They take a feeder and they feed multiple panels. Um, because, guys, because the load, the load could be, but remember, if, if the feeder is 225 amp, I can't pull more than 225 amp out of the whole system. For example, when you guys did your calculation, if your lighting load is 225 amp, say your, your load was 200 amp, then you decided to go, say, let's just say two, um, 205 amps, 205 amps, your lighting load. You went to 225 amp panel, cool. But you decided, Darren, your panel, you need only one panel. But you decided to have this panel. Um, you decided to have the, the, this panel fed from, um, uh, split into two sections. So you can have one panel on the first floor, one panel on the second floor. Here's one way of doing it. One panel on the first floor, one panel on the second floor. So that's um, sub-feed, sub-feed. Um, actually, with the sub feed, this could be could the, the feeder could could have multiple could be more than the panel. So sub feed, the feeder could be more than the panel. So I can have a 400 amp feeder, a 400 amp feeder here feeding 
200 dm plus 200 dm. 200 dm plus 200 dm. Any question guys about the subfeed? The problem with the subfeed is if you have a short circuit right on, uh, on in this area here, what could happen to the feeder? Your feeder is down. So you lose all your panels. Any comments, any questions about the subfeed? What's the advantage of this? Cheap, cheap installation. You take a 400 amp here, or 225 amp, 400 amp here, and you split it into 200 here and 200 here, for example. 600 amp, you take a 600 amp feeder, you split it into 200, 200, and 200. As long as the tab rule, can you guys see from here the tab rule? The tab rule, you, you have to tab within the 10 or the 50 tab rules will come to the tab rule. You can't. So this junction box cannot be further than 25 feet away from the pen, which is okay. I mean, we can we can make it out. So that's your um, sub feed. This is how they tie them together. The double lugs over here, you come in, come out. And this will be attached to a circuit breaker right here. Different ways of, of tabbing the feeder. Here's another, see the feeder is going here where they come and they tab the feeder. Everybody can see how different ways of tabbing the feeder guys. Tabbing the feeders to go to feed these multiple panels. Circuit breakers guys, uh, panels are supposed to house circuit breakers. Circuit breakers can be single pole, double pole, three pole. Everybody understand? If I have a two way single phase, how many poles do I need? Two. If I have 120, how many poles do I need? One. If I have two way three phase, three poles, three pole circuit breakers. So that's basically what this is telling you. Um, when you purchase the panels in a, in a commercial industrial, you're going to hear uh, uh, when Square D and Color Hammer came here, if you guys remember, I know it has been a while, that contractors during they always buy the frame, the panel, and then the, the chassis inside the panel, it comes later. So a box, they buy a box, right, that can house 400 amp. You put the box in the wall or on the wall, surface mounted typically. You put your pipe, your electrician come, pull your wire and everything else, right? Put the pipe, and then later on in the project, you order the chassis, the stuff inside it, the cover, and you attach it right inside that box, right? And then the circuit breakers. And sometimes, guys, to, because uh, the manufacturers, workers of the manufacturers cheaper than electricians, what they do is they have all the whole uh, guts of the panel all assembled by the manufacturers. How many circuit breakers you need? 15 amp, 20 amp, 30 amp, single pole, three pole, all ready to go. And you just plug it into the box and and, and torque it to that the, to that box to make it uh, cheaper. Instead of hiring K Darren for uh, 64 thousand hour to go and plug in circuit breakers, just plug in circuit breakers. So you put that guts inside the box, and then you hire an electrician to bring all these wires that's already inside the box and terminate these wires through the lugs of these circuit breakers. Any comments, guys, about these? Any comments, any questions? And then, of course, your circuit breakers are ordered either with the chassis or ordered separately for these. Uh, protective device. So this is just a selection of circuit breakers should be based on the necessity. So why do we, when you order a circuit breaker, guys, number one, you have to protect from all the way to the circuit. The voltage is all the way to 120. And the interrupting rating, the interrupting rating of the circuit breakers, the short circuit protection, that tie with the interrupting rating, and also coordination between the devices. Do you guys remember when you did last time with me, the project that we did, and we did coordination between overcapacitation devices? That's a big deal. So when you order the circuit breakers inside the 4,000 amp switch gear, in the back of your mind, what is the voltage? Let's start with the proper overload. I need an 800 amp uh, circuit breaker, drought circuit breaker in the switch gear. So to protect me from overload, then I what's the voltage? The vo My voltage is 480, so I, I could be picking up 600 volts. That would cover 480. Uh, interrupting rating, 35 or 65,000 amp based on the short circuit. That's also tied to the short circuit value. And coordinate. When you coordinate it, remember the curves that you guys were playing with these curves last quarter and you coordinate them? Meaning if I have a short circuit in that uh, fixture above your head, do I want the switch gear down in the basement of Dunwoody to trip the circuit breaker of that switch gear to trip? Of course not. So you coordinate, coordinate the overcompetition device or selectivity so the circuit breaker closer to the action, the ground fault or the, or the short circuit will trip first. 
any comments, guys, about selecting the circuit breakers? It could be a 15 amp circuit breaker or a thousand amp circuit breaker. As a matter of fact, you, Joe, with your friend Chad, you have just finished your load calculation yesterday, right? And you guys have a, a thousand amp, a 600 amp, a 300 amp, a 400 amp. There's a bunch of panels that you guys are going to be specified. And you're going to do the coordination for them. When you set, there's something called magnetic trip. Magnetic trip, guys, is the short circuit part of the circuit breaker. Here's the rules for the magnetic trip. The lower the setting, the more protection you have. The lower the setting, the more protection you have. Um, and so that's the, that, and it should be lower than the, the, uh, the value of the short circuit available at that point, lower than the value of the short circuit. So when you, when you have that beautiful, um, um, circuit breaker that you have when you have a care a circuit breaker that you guys want to see in a second with your friend Chad here um, this part is the overload part this part here is the magnetic part the short circuit that's the short circuit part so this part here, the lower, the better. Meaning if I push it this way, my system is protected better. That's what they're saying. If you push this leg that way, when they say push it, man, you guys adjust it. There's an adjustment. If you adjust it to move that direction, that's more protection. More uh, protection. This is less protection. So you allow the short circuit to sit more. And of course, your short, the available short circuit have to be the highest available short circuit have to be handled right here, right? So anywhere, anywhere in this system, if you have a short circuit, anywhere here, it could be handled. Short circuit, for example. This becomes a big deal, guys, when we do the short circuit coordination one more time, like you did with your friend Chad in the commercial project. So that's um, that's basically what um, what I wanted to show you uh let's go back into almost done with that one sitting uh this is how they do the circuit breaker i hope please ask your friend chat for refund if you graduate from here not knowing how the layout of the panel boards are please because if you don't make fool of yourself you walk into a project and you're looking at, at, at a panel you open the panel the electrician and you have no idea where phase a is you have to you spend two years of done with it so that doesn't make you good. I know the electricians will do that. The code guys say, if you're looking at a panel like this, from the left to the right, what, what phase is this? Left to right, A, B, C. That's the code. So if you're looking at a panel, if you want to go phase A, where's phase A out of all these panels? Always the first from the left, A, B, C, right? So that's, you guys should know that. Check, second. When they feed these fuses or circuit breakers, they always feed them. The first one would be A from phase A, right? So you're going to have phase A, phase B, phase C, phase A, phase B, phase C, and they alternate them. That's how they build them. When you're looking at a panel, the circuit breaker, single pole circuit breaker, is going to be the first two, the number one and number two, and they go even, right, in panel board, even on the left, Odd, uh, I mean, odd on the left, even on the right. So that would be one, two. So if I ask you right now, one, two, the circuit, uh, uh, the circuit one, or the circuit breaker one, or the fuse one and two, are they coming from the same phase? Yes. One and two are always coming from the same phase. Here's how they label them, guys. Phase A, one, two. Phase B, three, four. Phase C, five, six. And they keep repeating it. A, B, C. A, B, C, and they keep they keep uh, repeating it. When they do it this way, I don't know if you guys, anybody knows why they do it this way? Why can't they put phase A and phase A next to each other? If they put them phase A and phase A in here, what if you have a two pole circuit, two pole load, how are you gonna feed it? You can't feed a two pole. So the, the way the smarter than Chad long time ago discover is they have to put the phases A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C and stagger them this way, all the way through. This is N, in a switchboard design, and left, uh, in a panel board, left is always uh, odd, even is always, um, um, left is always odd, and right is always even. Any question, guys, so when we have circuit 22, that will be immediately. Where would it be? On the right, right? 
circuit 55 on the left. Have and you seen those panel boards in Canada where they Oh, that's uh, that becomes a switch gear. Oh, the whole panel. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Where you can. I go on yeah. Uh, ah, here's what the code says. Very good point. If you if it's standing like this, A B C from left to right. Mm -hmm. If it's horizontal, yeah. top to bottom A B C. If it's standing and you put the buses in front of each other, the depth, the same thing from the front, looking front, A B C. So it goes A, B, C, top to bottom, front to back, A, B, C, left to right, A, B, C. That's the code requirement. Cool? That's basic for switch gear, switchboard, all the panels. Now there's some exceptions for control panels that you need to match existing systems, but that, these are the exceptions, not the rules. Any questions about this? This could be, <laughs> if you have circuit breakers, guys, uh, fuses, you always have to have a circuit breaker with them to disconnect them. Okay, so that's basically it. This is just showing you guys a layout, uh, a riser. You're looking at a riser. Here's a bus that's coming in here uh, through a, j a junction box here, disconnect, feeding a transformer. The transformer is feeding, <coughs> the transformer is going here. This disconnect is, this is the primary of the transformer, the secondary. Then you, the secondary board will feed this switch board, uh, what looks like a, uh, uh, a panel board. And then also from here, we're feeding multiple uh, motor loads, multiple motor loads. I know it's kind of goofy the way it's drawn, but really a bus duct feeding a disconnect that protects the transformer, transform the voltage to a lower voltage. And this is the secondary of the transformer, disconnect, fuse disconnect, to feed this panel. And this panel is feeding through the bus duct here um, or wire way, and uh, this is a wire way actually, uh, wire way feeding multiple controllers that control multiple motors. That's one way of doing business. Any comments guys, any questions about this chapter? Straightforward. I'm going to, before I let you go on that one, so really I know I'm repeating certain things. I'm going to show you the NEC code book where it says a few things. And here's the article, the notoriously famous article about the NEC code book. This article applies for all the panels except the high voltage panel. If you read here, it does not apply to high voltage panels, higher than 600 volt. Okay, so um, very easy, very, uh, um, what I want to uh, emphasize is phase arrangement. Remember what we just, can you just see the phase arrangement? Phase arrangement in a three phase ABC from front to back, top to bottom, and left to right. Everybody can see that? Directly from the code, what I just told you. Uh, left to right, top to bottom, uh, front to back, right in here. Then the code, it tells you when you build them, you have to arrange them in this way. Okay, so that's a piece of cake, right? Um, so that I want to emphasize that one. The second one, guys, is switch for, uh, switchboards or panel boards um, identification. And high leg, remember the high leg? If you everybody knows what the high leg is, if you have a center tap delta, phase B to the ground will give you two A. That's a high leg, wild leg, bastard leg. So you have to identify it so the electricians, naive electricians, don't take a phase and a neutral from phase B and go burn equipment at 208 when they're rated for 120. What's happening if you put 208 on equipment rated for 120? You burn it. You will know immediately what happens. Okay, so the code says guys, you have to identify it and you have to put a label. Caution phase B has a 208 voltage to ground. Label it. So it makes a dumb proof. That's also for the panel. Ungrounded system, guys, if you have a Delta in 2011, they require you also to label the uh, ungrounded system with the operating voltage. Ungrounded system for 80, they have to have a label on it. So these are also interesting. Uh, field identification, circuit directory and circuit identification. Do you guys remember the uh, schedules that you did with Chad? And all every panel had to have a schedule, right? That's, where does that come from? The code, the code says you have to have a circuit directory. So you have every circuit breaker have to be identified by the load, a number and the load that that circuit breaker is feeding. And you guys have done that. In 2011, and I want you guys to adhere to this, which by the way, Revit does, uh, they want you to label the panel with the supply of that panel. For example, 
right on this panel here, it will say this panel is fit from panel number 555. So you have to identify the feeder that feeds the panel. That was in 2011, brand new. Um, so that's basically a few things. Unused opening, Jeff, what do you do with unused openings in a panel? Close them. them. Like, and that's typical in the code and anywhere. And of course, if you want to put a switch gear in what location, what do you think if you put a panel in what location? Anybody can guess what the panel has to be rated for? 3R, right? Wet location, yeah, yeah, 3R or any wet location. Okay, so that's basically what this article that I wanted to show you guys. Not a whole lot into it. The most important things. Um, construction specification, conduits, and all this good stuff. The last thing I want to show you um, is a Cutler Hammer. A couple of things about Cutler Hammer. So now let's go to Cutler Hammer. You guys have that big fat book in the front of you here. That big fat book, that color hammer section. When you specify for chair, when you have a cut sheets for your fixtures. By the way, we're bringing square D, so we have to use square D. But color hammer a little bit organized easier. So can you guys see section? And this is online, by the way. If you get section 22, what does it say? Panel board. Click on panel board, my friends, and open it. That will give you all the panel board that color hammer um, is is making. Um, and let me just. Uh, I don't want to make it a, a vendor deal here okay remember the um, power r 1a and power r so if you click on this it takes you to panel this is a panel board when you do a cut sheet for your friend chad where are you gonna go right here here's the panel board so this one is power r l1 so let's see what this does for a living this can give you main lugs only amp rating and this amp main circuit breaker you can have a main circuit breaker look at the voltage it's doing I voltage is only limited to 240 volt though. So can I use it in 480? That's not mine. A different one. Main lugs, uh, main circuit breaker, you can go up to a 400 amp. So can anybody tell me your receptacle panel? Can this be my receptacle panel? Easy. Can this be my receptacle panel? Easy. What was the size of our receptacle panel? Was it 200, 300 amp? That could be easily your receptacle panel. It's easily your receptacle panel. Cool. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that one. Okay, so here's my circuit breaker. Um, and the type of the circuit breakers I can uh, I can use uh, with it. System voltages, 240. Okay, so I'm going to go back to um, one here and enter. Okay, so now suppose let's go to power R L2, guys. Okay, so now, Jeff, my friend, what, what happened to the 48277? If I need a 48277, color hammer give you power R line 28 right here. Okay. Now how many amps? Let's look at the amps, will ya? This guy can get me. Look at the amps. Main breaker up to 400 amp. Now, all lighting panel. What was the lighting panel? 100 amp or 400? 300 amp, I think. Or lighting panel. Anybody remember the lighting panel size? 300 amp. So the 300 amp lighting panel size, guys. Can I use this baby power R line 28? Yes. So that, why? Because the voltage, look at the voltage. I can, uh, I'm looking at AC voltage. My AC voltage right in here is 480-277. Okay, can I have thumbs up, Chad? Here's my panels. Okay, so now I want to show you one more example and get out of here. Um, let's go to 3R and see where 3R take us. Now 3R is a big boy. Can you guys see 3R can take you to 600 volt even and amp-wise, and brand circuit wise can take me to 600 amp or 800 amp lux. Guys, when it comes to sizing panels, you have to be familiar with some uh, of the manufacturer specification. So these are your, can you guys see that becomes big? It's standalone, it's not standalone, against the wall, bigger equipment, we're going to 800 amp. And let me see if we go a little bit bigger than that. Um, oops. If we can uh, get a little bit bigger than that. I think uh, three, four R. Okay, look, look at four R. Now we maxed it. Can you see that, guys? We're going circuit breaker to 1200 amp. Can you guys see that? So that's as, as high as you can get on, for the most part, for, on a panel board. Now what happens if I don't need, for the 4000 amp switch gear, guys, what do you need to do for my 4000 amp switch gear? Can I use any of these for my 4000 amp switch gear? No. These are panel boards. You're capping in. Look at the cap. Can you guys see the cap here as well? 
1200 amps. I'm cabbed at 1200 amps. I'm cabbed right here at 1200 amps. Here's my voltages that I can do, no problem. Um, okay, so that's, I, cannot, I can use this panel for almost all our, my systems, all my systems that we have except the main. The last thing I'm gonna show, so that's basically guys, the panel board. Any question about panel boards, example of the industry, panel boards? Any comments, any questions about that? I'm gonna show you the switch board and the switch gear and then I'm gonna shut up. So that's your panel boards. And again, these are online. I emailed you guys these, right? I emailed you the link from Color Hammer. If not, I can, I thought I did it last quarter. Great, great cut sheets, great cut sheets. Bus duct, right here. Well, cut sheets and so forth. Okay, can you guys see now? Here's a switchboard low voltage. Everybody can see that, guys? Switchboard low voltage. Um, so I need switchboard low voltage. That's 21. Let's go click on switchboard design. Open the switchboard design. See that the switchboard design is different. Okay, so uh, let's go 100. So here's my switchboard. Now we're getting into um, a bigger construction. A standalone in the middle of um, a bigger circuit breakers, guys, that you can use with them. Um, so here's the here's the design that you're looking at. Can you everybody can see that? Now that's called the switchboard design. These are can be standalone right in the middle of middle of a room. Standalone. That becomes when do you specify something like this, Darren? If you have higher than 1200 amps, 1600 amps, right? Anything higher than 1200 amps, here's your baby. Switchboard. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? Everybody understand? When we go Boston Scientific, gentlemen, you are going to be looking at a piece of equipment like this. Standalone, bigger equipment, 92 inches high. Um, each one of these sections, 30 inch uh, wide, 55 inch deep. You know, they're big, big, big chunk of metal. Standalone. You know, you can put them against the wall if you want to, but they're meant to be standalone. You can sit right in the middle of the switch gear. And here's my favorite, though. Um, can you guys see the amps that you can get these boys at right here? Anybody can get, get the amps from 800 amp all the way to what? 5,000 amp. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand what a switch gear is. Now, you can't get 800 amp, but typically if you need an 800 amp, it would be cheaper, um, Jeff, to do what? Panel board, right? Typically, you start, you start making sense if you go higher than 1,200 amp. It starts making sense. Switchboard. And these guys can, they actually can go bus-wise up to 6,000 amp, but we don't use them at 6,000 amp. We typically use them, we cap them, almost all the engineers guys cap them at 4,000 amp. That's the cap. So when we buy them, you rarely, if ever, you will see anything higher than 4,000 amp used in the field, even though the manufacturer can make 5,000 and make 6,000. But typically, utilities don't allow you to do that. And actually, a lot of applications that see in, they stick with even the 3,000 amp. So if, if you need another more than 3,000 amp, you know what they do? They just give you another switch gear. Cool. Any comments, guys, any questions about the switch gear before I move to the last thing, which is switch, um, switch uh, this switch, this is switch board to move the switch gear. Look at the arrangement, guys, how they arrange them. Uh, there is sections of arranging them without getting into all the details. It becomes bigger, fatter, more depth. Um, you can put a lot of circuit breakers in it. So that's a great information about um, switch gear, um, switchboard, switchboard design. Okay, so I'm gonna go because I don't want to make it uh, vendors, vendor oriented. Oh, by the way, the other thing that you can go put uh, put in it. Here's, it says front axis and uh, look at the front axis. How about rear axis? You can have front or rear axis for your equipment. Um, okay, the last thing I'm going to show you guys is um, switch gear. Where's my switch gear? Metal enclosed draw out switch gear. Everybody can see that, guys. Everybody can see metal enclosed draw out switch gear. Let's go to that one. That's the top line. This is the Cadillac of the of the of the panels and the switch gears. Okay. Uh, when you guys, uh, when Color Hammer speaker comes now, can you guys look at this boy? And, and this is look at it clearly. This is what you guys are going to be specifying for our project. Kerry, my friend, does it make sense? This is what you guys are going to be specifying for our project. This type of a switch gear. 
What's the difference? The switch gear switchboard are the same. They look the same. The only difference, they can stand alone in the middle of the, uh, the room. The only difference is these tend to be draw circuit breakers, so you can draw them like a drawer and pick them up with a lift and put them on a the bench and work on these circuit breakers. Each one of these circuit breakers can cost you up to $10,000. The circuit breaker itself. So what you're looking at right here, you're looking at one circuit breaker, two, three, four. So the sections, the, the, the way they do them, they have only one whole section can be can only house four circuit breakers. One whole section from here to here um, can only have can only have. Um, let me just get the dimension, some dimension. Can only have three circuit breakers. Three circuit breakers. So that's um, that one here. Okay. So that's basically what you, what you guys are going to be designing with your friend Chad. Any comments, guys, about, about this one? Any comments? Any questions? Looked at. Uh, I think I designed the switch here. Okay. Um, I thought I did it on right here. Okay. So do me a favor. Here's the. I'm just going to show you right on this, so you can remember. Here's the. Um, here's the sketch that I would like you guys to do for design. Everybody understand? For our design, I would like you to sketch the following. Everybody get that? I would like you to sketch this one on, on Revit. And um, basically, we're going to look at something sim very similar to this. Very similar to this. Right? That's kind of my sketch that I'm going to do. Right? And right here. So that's a sketch that we're going to do. Cool. Then. What, what I would like you guys to do, then you're going to have a, the following sections. Here's one section, two sections, three sections. Okay, I did the I did the sketch for you guys here, and based on the circuit breakers that we have, how many circuit breakers we have, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, ten. We need ten circuit breakers. We need ten circuit breakers. Okay, so we need ten circuit breakers, guys. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this one, this will be spare, and this will be spare. Can you guys do that? So these are where your circuit breaker are, breakers are going to be located. These are where your circuit breakers, you're going to have three sections, three sections, like this one. For a total of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 circuit breakers, and the rest are going to be spare. The rest, because you can't buy them, the rest are going to be spare. So what I'm expecting you guys to do the following, is to draw that one. This section here, <coughs> what I'm going to do, guys, this section, I'm going to have the whole section, two sections. This is going to be Gen, Gen 1, and this will be Gen 2. So this is, the whole section will be divided into two, Kerry. One for generator one and one for generator two. Now you're going to say, Chad, where the heck did they keep, came up with the generator? You're going to have two generators for the whole build. So it's going to look like this, generator. And and if you do, if you mind me, draw, I'm going to extend this um, slightly uh, to this side, actually. I'm going to extend it slightly to this side. And come over here and draw if it starts to make sense and this section here guys just going to get rid of this section here this section this that particular section is going to be for main circuit breaker and this for the cts that's what i would like you guys to draw so you bring the cts current transformers and metering equipment right here then you put your main circuit breaker, that's going to be a 4,000 amp, right? This is going to be a 4,000 amp. And you feed the whole switch gear. Then you're going to put two sections for, one section split into two for your generator. And the rest of them, here's what, what I would like you guys to label this, please. I would like you guys to label them MP-1, MP-2. Um, this is RP. RP, everybody knows our receptacle panel. This is LP. This one will be emergency. Oops, wow. Now that screwed up the whole thing. 
Uh, this one, let me use a different color then. This is emergency panel. Emergency panel. This is bus dock uh, 208. Remember the 208? And just to read to you guys, this is bus dock uh, 480, because we have a 480 bus dock. And then this is uh, um, environmental chamber one and environmental chamber two. Does that sound familiar to you, the, the equipment that we have? This is your project. And this will be chiller. Chiller. We only have one chiller. That's what I would like you guys to draw uh, as an electrical detail. So when you go order your switch gear, Jeff, does it make sense now? Your system next week when you guys when you guys do a switch gear and drop a switch gear inside Revit, your switch gear will look exactly like this. It's going to have one section for the main the circuit breaker and CPs, one section for the for the generator, and three sections for the feeders. And how we divide them exactly like you're looking at. Anybody wants me to read anything for you? These are directly from the panel. These are the panels that you guys signed. Here? Yeah. These are environmental chamber, EC1 and EC2. Uh, Jeff, do you want me to read anything? I know it's, it's tough. Yeah, you want the, that's all you want to right? These are all, yeah, they're all one. Yeah, they're all, all of them are one unit divided into sections. Okay. Everybody got that one? Kerry and uh, Aaron, did you guys get that? Okay, now I want to just throw a couple of dimensions at you and then I'm done. Here's the dimension I would like you, when you dimension it, guys, I would like you, for the most part, we could change that one. I would like you to use dimension, uh, when you draw that one, 30 inches, and each one of these dimension, each one of these is 30 inches, 30 inches, 30 inches. 30 inches. Okay? Everybody got the 30 inches? Sections. Each section is 30 inches. The height, the height from here to here, the height, guys, from here to here, what was the height? 92 inches. 92 inches. Everybody got the height of the switch gear? Every section here is 30 inches. All of them. The height, what's the height? The height is 92 inches. The depth, the depth, how am I going to do the depth? The depth is from here to here. The depth, guys, from here to here is 54 inches. Give or take. Now, Jamie, do you see how big this is beast is? Do you guys see how big this beast is that you're going to be putting in your in your project? One more time. This one's just 30 feet. And, no, I'm, oh, that's a lot. 30 inches. All of them are 30 inches. Yeah, 30 inch. Each section is 30 inches, guys. The height is 92 inches. You can see that's a high. That's a big switch gear. And the depth. Look at the depth. That's a switch gear design. 54. 54. Let me clarify it a little bit. 54 inches. 54 inches. This is your switch gear design. So what is the small buckets again? Or... They are circuit breakers. So this will be, the, these two are assigned for one circuit breaker for the generator. These two are assigned for one circuit breaker for generator two. And the rest of them are each pocket. This is bare, spare. This is for uh, mechanical panel one, two, receptacle panel, lighting panel, emergency panel, uh, bus dock 208, bus dock 480, uh, environmental chamber one and two, and chiller. Okay, you mean to read anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. RP, so RP can I print that? No, uh, let me see if I can do that. There you go. Okay, I have, I captured it. If I ditch the background, it will stay there. Yeah. You think? Okay. If you say so. No, it took it with it. But I have I have a copy of it though. Before I uh, that's all right. Here you go. Here's the copy of that. Um I will um
I'll PDF it. I'll PDF it. Okay. This is just a detail. This is just a detail. You don't have to draw. You guys, you're gonna draw it just a box, really, right? Everybody understand? You would draw a box and show 30 inches and just cut it like I'm cutting it here, and name it, right? Type into it. That's not really hard in CAD. Or rather, really not. I don't want it to be three D. The only part that three D is just that little edge here, and here. That's all. Everything is just two Ds. You understand? Everybody understand? Don't you panic here. Um, so forty eighty volt, then below that. Is... Um, four eighty. This is uh, environmental chamber one, EC one, EC two, and a chiller. Okay, and I apologize for the. And what do we do? Yes. Uh, that GE1, GE2. Yep, GE1, Gen1, and I would say Gen instead of GE, guys. GE and Gen1 and Gen2, please. When you when you type them, GE and Gen1 and Gen2. Now, can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand what a switch gear. So I walked you guys from a hundred amp panel. <laughs> From color hammer all the way to the top notch switch gear, drought switch gear. When we go to where are we gonna go? Yeah, when we go to Allianz right here on 394, when you go to Allianz and we tour their places, Darren, they, you're gonna be looking at this picture, exactly this picture. Hot humming 3000 M. I think three or four thousand M. Yes. So I'm trying to prep you guys for the for the stuff that we're gonna be doing. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? That's really all what I have for today. So any comments, any questions about this panel? Now, um, if you guys don't have the link for Cutler Hammer, please let me know. I can shoot it your way. You can have all the cut sheets that you want to uh, carry right from there. Beautiful cut sheets, beautiful information. As a matter of fact, how many of you guys want to be a designer and work for engineering firms? If you work for an engineering firm and you're a designer and you don't know this site, which is basically this site has this book. See that book that you're looking at, Color Hammer Specifier? That's it. That's what you're looking at electronically. If you don't know this book, you don't exist in the design industry, literally. You know, as you leave Dunwoody here. So it helps you a lot. Any comments, guys? Any questions about the switch here? So, summarize. We have switch, we, we have panel boards. Um, Andrew, my friend, we have panel boards that can go all the way up to 1200 amp. Higher than 1200 amp, I have two options. Switch gear, the poor man's job, can go all the way up to 5000 amp. Typically, 4000 is what we use. Um, they're not draw out, typically. And there's a switch gear that can go all the way also up to 5000 amp. Typically, we use 4000 amp up to cap them at 4000 amp. And you're looking at it right here. What's the advantage of this, guys? The advantage of this, if one of these circuit breakers to malfunction, which is each one of them could be $10,000. If one of them is to malfunction, guys, you can go draw out that circuit breaker with the left, lift it, put it in a cart, wheel it all the way to the manufacturer or to your technicians to fix it. And you will have a spare one. What they do, guys, they have always a spare one. They plug the spare, adjust the sitting on it, and you're up and running within seconds. Where would you use a system like this, guys? In, um, you use it in hospitals, a lot of hospitals like this one. Data centers, sensitive loads, any loads that you do not want to interrupt. You want to minimize the interruption of that load. Hospitals, uh, sport arenas, um, typical example of this. Um, data centers, uh, process, process control, manufacturers who don't want interruption, uh, they use these. Why? Because one of the malfunction will literally within five minutes you are up and running. Now, if you know, imagine if you if these were bolted circuit breaker, you have to go shut down. There is hot hot working permit you have to fill. Shut the system down. So you need at least an hour to refix them. That's if you have, if everything is okay. Within ten minutes you're up and running it. Time is money, right? Okay. Did I drive the point to you guys, the difference between these three? That's what I'm trying to do. Now, my friend Gary will take it to the next level when he comes next week. Um, 
and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you.